Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that introduction. It's a pleasure to be here and to be presenting in your session, in your presence, ma'am. Thank you so much. Slide show. Okay. So, uh, this is a basically a study, a small study which we had done in non-arthritic ischemic optic neuropathy. Well, we wanted to know how the changes, vascular changes occur over the time. So I have no financial disclosure to make as far as this study is concerned. And we all know that non-arthritic ischemic optic neuropathy is a very common opt uh, optic neuropathy after the age of 50 years. Specifically, if the patient has risk factors, vascular risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, homocysteinemia, and other uh, uh, risk factors. So it's basically an ischemic insult to optic nerve and the site of lesion is at short posterior ciliary arteries. Now the problem is that, that these arteries were difficult to delineate before but with the advent of a OCTA we can still you know are able to see the circulation of the optic nerve at various level which is a non-invasive pro procedure. So that gives us an added advantage that the procedure is non-invasive. So what's the rationale? The rationale is that there have been multiple studies who have seen the OCTA changes in cases of NAIN, in cases of papillitis, in cases of papilledema, and they have said that in cases of ischemic optic neuropathies, the vascular density decreases. But there are very few studies, hardly uh, I did not come across any particular study that has over the time uh, looked at the change in the vascular pattern over, over a period of six months in these ischemic optic neuropathy cases. So that's why we, you know, came up with this idea of looking at the how it progresses. So the aim was to evaluate the longitudinal microvascular changes at the disc and at the macula over a period of six months in cases of non arthritic ischemic optic neuropathies. So it was a prospective longitudinal study where after taking ethical clearance, we included 15 patients of NAIN with age match control. And these cases had to present to us within the six weeks of onset of symptoms with the clinical diagnosis of NAIN. We ruled out all other causes of optic neuropathies including intracranial lesions, glaucoma or any other retinopathies that might have affected the uh, OCTA except for grade 1 hypertensive uh, retinopathy where you minimally see any changes in OCTA. Similarly, any refractive errors, if at all high or uh, uh, whether it's myopic or hypermetropic may affect the vascular density. So those were also ruled out. So in, an informed consent was obtained and patient underwent the detailed ophthalmic examination which included all those neuroophthalmological tests which we commonly do in our clinical practice. But apart from that, we also did OCTA at the disc and at the macula. So it was a 4 mm by 4.5 mm by 4.5 mm scan at the disc and at the macula. And the segmentation was done at different levels. So the superficial level at the disc, then at the uh, radial peripapillary capillary level, and then at the choroidal level. Similarly, at the macula, a 4.5 by 4.5 mm scan was done and the segmentation was again done at the superficial capillary layer, the deep capillary plexus and the choroidal plexus. So this is, uh, this is how you get the segmentation. You can see here, so this uh, case, you can see this is a superficial one, this is a deep one and this is the choroidal one. So this is a scan of the normal patient. Similarly, same thing is done for the macular uh, uh, scan. And how did we evaluate? So a qualitative uh, uh, evaluation is very easy. You can see, uh, if you look at the picture, you can see that some vessel dropouts are there. But then it's very subjective. So what you need is a quantitative parameter that will tell us whether there is any uh, objective loss or not. So how did we process? We actually uh, took the image. When, we, uh, when you save the image, you save it in a JPG format. Then you do an auto thresholding. You open it in an image J software. It's a very well-known software. It's available freely. And then you do an auto thresholding with minimum thresholding. So what it does, it delineates all the major vessels, right? Then you do a, then you open the same image in the same software, but with the another window. And this time you do a local thresholding with a Falsankar uh, algorithm and what you get is the total number of white pixels. So what we did, we just subtracted the 
major white pixels from the total number and divided it by the total number. So this is how we got it. So the, from the total, the, the major vessels were subtracted and that's how the vascularity index was calculating. So we calculated these indices at all three levels, the superficial level, the deep level and the choroid level at both disc and macula. So the, uh, our result showed us that <clears throat> many of our patients had systemic association. Almost all of them had some systemic association and risk factors. The mean time of presentation was within four weeks. And what did we found on OCTA? We found that when we compared it with the control, the, uh, at the disc level, all, uh, the, at all segmentation level, at the superficial level, at the radial cap capillary level, and at the posterior choroid, um, you know, choroidal level, the vascular density in the NAN patients was much, much less as compared to control. So it was significantly less. Similarly, at the macular level, we found that the superficial vascular density and the deep uh, capillary plexuses vascular density was decreased as compared to controls. When we evaluated the trend, we found that at the disc level, the, the vascular density at the superficial level and at the radial, cap radial capillary layer kept on decreasing significantly till three months. After three months, it still decreased, but the but this it was not statistically significant difference. So from baseline to three months, there was a statistically significant difference, but from three months to six months, there was not so statistically significant difference. While the choroidal cap, um, plexes act actually stabilized, so they did not show any major change. Same thing we found in the. <coughs> uh, Sorry, the same thing we found at the level of macula that the superficial capillary layer and the deep uh, capillary plexus showed decrease. Although this decrease was not so significant when you compare it with the disc parameters. So this mainly is because of the ganglion cell layer. So as we loss of the ganglion cell layer. So as we know that once the ischemia has set in, the optic atrophy also sets in. So there is loss of both retinal ganglion cell layers as well as nerve fiber layer, which leads to the decreased demand of blood. And that leads to the secondary uh, decrease in the capsule, uh, uh, vessel density. When we tried to correlate it with the uh, visual function, we found that there is some correlation, positive correlation of the uh, various vascular indices at the disc with the visual uh, acuity and the contrast sensitivity. So not directly, or I will not say that, you know, uh, absolute correlation, but somehow we can get an idea that patients who have less vascular density or the patients who have poor vasculature will show less recovery as uh, compared to the patients who have le um, uh, uh, um, more vascular density, right? So we understand that the vascular basis of the pathology in NAN is there, but till now we have lack of modalities which will actually delineate or will objectively ca quantify the cap uh, capillaries over there. So OCTA has now given us that advantage. It has opened a new kind of investigation for us and we can look into the vasculature. We can also quantitatively assess it. So we found that there was significantly low peripapillary microvascular density at all levels at the presentation when compared to the control group, which it has been reported by various other studies also. Now we know that the superficial peripapillary capillaries are derived from short posterior ciliary artery. So it's an indirect measurement of the same thing. Similarly, the radial capillaries are have the contribution from posterior ciliary arteries, but also have some contribution from retinal arterioles. So it also, so any decrease in that also suggests that probably the short posterior ciliary arteries are showing, showing ischemia. This, tech, uh, this decrease in vascular density continues over a period of three months and after three months more or less it gets stabilized. 
what uh, what one has to be careful when we are analyzing you know the octa image is that because of the disk edema which is there at the presentation sometime because of the shadowing error the segmentation error we may not have get the accurate values and the falsely we, we may get false values regarding the loss of vascular densities right similarly at macula we have seen that there is dense decrease in vascular density at the superficial and deep layer which was kind of because of the uh, uh, loss of ganglion cell layers and due to that there is a decrease in demand of you know uh, uh, blood supply so therefore we can explain that probably that's the secondary uh, due to the ganglion cell but it, there is also a possibility that there because of the constant edema there is also compartment compression kind of a syndrome which leads to secondary ischemia and may also lead to decrease in vascular uh, vascularity or there is a possibility of concurrent retinal ischemia so to, uh, to conclude octa may be a useful tool to delineate the microvascular structure of retina and help us in understanding the natural history as well as of pathology in in this case however the major limitation of this study was a small sample size and as i said there could have been segmentation errors due to edema thank you